I'm uh, Nancy Ruzica from ICT Intuition. I've uh, been in this industry a long time uh, and currently an analyst uh, with ICT Intuition. Um, I do have a slide, so you have to bear with me. Um, I only have five minutes, but I wanted to share some, a concept that's been distilled over hours and hours of, of conversations with operators and engineers and generally all the folks that have to um, that are left with how do we make all these innovations and all these cool things actually operational and make things work. So I know it's outside the scope of this a little bit, but if you've ever built a network, you should have to run it. And so those of you that are building networks uh, need to kind of start considering how in the end you're gonna make sure everything's gonna run right. So here's my picture. And I want to emphasize that this is not an architecture. It's, it's very simply just an operational concept. And it's just a way to look at how do we run these things. Because now we have the ability to apply analytics and intelligence and all those kinds of things to real-time data. And we can affect workflow. And we can affect uh, process. And we can affect all of those things. So how are we going to do that? Because you can't just do it centrally. You can't expect the NOC to do all of these things. So we can't create, but alternatively, you don't want to create just a bunch of new silos out there because we've done that before and that didn't work so well. Um, so we, it has to be interconnected, it has to be integrated, and it has to be, most of all, it has to be interoperable. So one alternative is to start to push that functionality, that operational functionality, out as far as we possibly can. And because doing that accomplishes several things. It places that basic functionality, fulfillment, assurance, billing, closer to the customer. Not all of it, just what they need, like adding another device. And in this picture, it's a sprinkler head. And then, because you know that subset of functionality out there is simple, it can then be reliably automated. So when the microservice that's out there says a sprinkler head failed, it tells the farmer or it tells the, the irrigation service. And it doesn't become one of a million events back at the knock that somebody has to deal with or that has, they, or worse than that, that gets correlated away and then your customer gets mad. So, Handling those problems locally and having the automation and the capabilities to handle those problems locally becomes a much bigger deal as we start to introduce IoT and connected vehicles and smart cities and even just enterprise digitization and, and creating digital enterprises and helping businesses become digital. So what we're enabling is an individual customer stack, but it's not an isolated customer stack. It's specific to the customer, but it's not wildly different from the other customer. And it's all tied together by data. It's a data-driven architecture. And the customer and the infrastructure layers are then aligned with a steering function that kinds of, that learns from other places and, and starts to share these things. At, and again, pushes it further out to the, to the edge. What? <laughs> but so, cause, because we know the closer you get to the edge, the further out you get, the less there is to do. There's fewer knobs to turn, it's less complicated, and then you can rely on and trust the automa automation. So again, it's not an architecture, but it is or should be a destination on the roadmap. So from that, my time's up. I do believe that, that this is something we need to discuss further, and there will be a paper on my website at some point soon, and then it'll also be shared via the layer one, two, three site. So, and I look forward to your feedback as we go.